Muting is a pain in the ass, fellas. I'm going <laughs> to let you know about that right now. <laughs> oh, God. And for I those was wondering what happened. And for those of you here with us still, uh, welcome to another fantastic week with 72 Pin Connector. Um, oh, we this have, is wonderful. We have the great Tom Webster with us this week. Howdy, everyone. As well as Adam motherfucking Jordan. Hello, 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 hello. Yeah, so that was a great thing. So, behind the scenes here, I will <laughs> mute my mic and our um, application we talked through, both. And, Discord. Okay, yes, we'll, we'll no shame. Like, we no love shame. Discord. Discord is fantastic, but I'll mute my Discord and I'll mute my mic. Well, I had issues unmuting my mic right there. The button wasn't working right. So, finally, when I got it, I started talking. I realized these guys aren't responding. <laughs> <laughs> and then it hits me. You stupid, stupid guy. You didn't unmute your Discord. <laughs> we, don't, we don't hate you. It's just your mic. So um, for those of you watching live on Twitch, or for those of you checking us out on YouTube, you're probably going to see my mouth moving for no reason. And that is why. <laughs> Unless we fix oh, it in the is, post. This is great. That, that should be our ending. So I what think are you it should guys- be the beginning. It is the beginning, in fact. Perfect. So what have you guys been playing this week? Playing. Not, not a whole lot. Yeah, really not much of all. Not much at all. Um, I played some Rocket League. That may come as a big surprise to you. Wait, um, wait, hold on. <laughs> Do you like Rocket League? <sighs> sort of. It's all right, I guess. All right. Um, but, they actually had some big news that we hit on last week um, about the Hot Wheels cars. Yeah, yeah, the Hot Wheels update. So how are that, those? Um, well, I mean, I don't really like the way the Hot Wheels look that much, but that's fine. But when they did the update, <laughs> the physics got messed up because, you know, adding Hot Wheels into the game completely changes the physics. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, why not? I mean, it, it was some sort of uh, part of the patch that wasn't supposed to be deployed that got deployed. Whoops. Unfinished code got deployed. But um Ooh. Tends yeah, to be they a hot, theme they nowadays. Hot that. Yeah, they hot fixed that real quick, though. Like, that night. So, what I want to know is, so, essentially, if you have a flat plane, this is going to get a little mathy, I'm sorry. If you have mm-hmm. a ball coming in at 45 degrees, it hits that flat plane, it's going to go off at 45 degrees. Some reason, they're playing with a physics setting where if it comes in at 45, it's going to go out at 60. Don't know why they're playing with this kind of physics setting. They got some cool game coming down the pipeline for this to replace hopefully Snow Day because for the love of God that's been out for way too long. Well, the the spin of the ball does affect how it bounces off the walls. But, so may, maybe they amplified the effect the spin had? Well, there were there were some issues with certain parts of certain maps that they tried to fix at one point and then it kind of messed up certain bounces and that sort of thing. It's like they try to fix one thing and then two other things pop up from that. So, ah, software yeah. development. Yes. I, I know you guys know all about yes. that. That's fix one I've bug. Never, <laughs> I've never fixed a bug and then had six more pop up. <laughs> no, so, no, no, hold no, on, no. wait a minute. This exposes an odd edge case. Okay, let's just work around and fix the edge case. Oh, fuck, but what about this thing? I'm yeah. just going to have to throw this out and develop it from the ground up. And you see, this is when you play it off like any good software developer will, that you fix the bug. And when your project manager comes in and said, what's up with all these other things going on? It's like, oh, those are added features I added while I was in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's slight randomization to the, the ball physics. We totally, fi- totally meant to do that. We yeah. figured that this would be best for the players so the lower skill ranks yeah. have a better chance, so... You throwing know, off even the people who can read the bounces, yeah. Yeah, we're yeah. redistributing the good players. Yeah, in a physics-based game, I think the most important part is, you know, the physics. Oh, I'm talking sure randomization. Random. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, it's it's mostly just the hats, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> or, or the pigeon heads. Actually, yeah, speaking of hats, I know you guys saw that that I posted, didn't you? Yes. yes. The guy, the guy collected and traded to get one thousand pigeon topper hats, which is probably the worst thing you can put on top of your car in that game. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a thousand of these things, and then pinged one of the developers on the Reddit, the subreddit for him, and they uh, granted him an in-game title, the Pigeon Man. He's the only person in the entire game with this title. 
And he's the only person that's, that's so going great. to get this title. <laughs> and for those of you who might think, oh, shit, this is what I need to do. They've already came out and said this is the only time they're yeah. doing something like this. Yes. This, this is guy, so fantastic. So my, my question is, what's in your head? It's like, oh, I like this pigeon. You know what? I'm going to collect a thousand of these. <laughs> I, it, I, I know it started as a joke and I've seen, I don't know if it's the same guy, but I've seen people, there's like a, a trading subreddit where people, you know, trade stuff and people will put up these high value, like alpha reward items where there's only a limited amount and they're going for crazy amounts of keys or money or whatever. And somebody will just be like, I'll give you 700 of this common topper. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> It's but just yeah, really funny. And if you look at the screenshot, there's a screenshot out there. Um, this guy had a thousand regular pigeon heads, but he also had probably about 300 other pigeon heads of varying, um, like the different certifieds and stuff. Oh, I didn't was, see those. Yeah. The other ones he had multiples of too. That wasn't just nice. the primary. <laughs> I wonder how much money he spent on all that. I was wondering because like one key is $1 roughly. Yeah. So I wonder if it was like, I'll give you a key for five pigeon heads. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, because I'm sure there was just a whole lot himself. of everything. Yeah. I mean, there's no way you do that yourself. That would take, I mean, if you played constantly since this game started introducing random drops of the pigeon head, I don't think you would be able to get enough. No. no you would no, probably have close. gotten 15, 20. Tops. I don't even think, yeah, maybe. So you're telling me I can be the sombrero man. I know I'm not going to get the title, but I could be the guy to collect 1,000 sombreros. Uh, no, because those are uh, you would base have, items. You would have to have a certified oh. sombrero. No, those don't exist. That's not an uncommon drop. Like, it's not no, a no. dropped item. It's an item you just get. I have a Damn. sniper sombrero. Really? Yeah. Oh. Uncommons can be well, certified and painted. Or commons can be certified and painted. Oh, okay. And Fair it enough. makes them uncommon, I think. I am incorrect. But, um, I did want to... Wait a minute. Do we have to mark down the date and time? What? Did Urch just out Rocket League you? It, I think it, we need to, like, did, stamp yeah. this down. <laughs> In his defense, it's not like I don't play myself some Rocket League. I'm sitting at about 850 hours of it, so... I, I play a little bit of Rocket League, too. But, um, there was something about this that was slightly frustrating to me, this patch. So mm -hmm. I really like the Batmobile, but for those of you who are familiar with it, it's um, very little customization. You can add a little bit of paint and it's boost is the most obnoxious squeal they, in no, the no, world. No, 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 They fixed that though. It's, it's really fine now. It's, I still find it's it fine. annoying though. Uh, <laughs> but, a... <laughs> but I was actually just going to say, so I went with the twin mill, which is mm -hmm. essentially the same hitbox as the Batmobile. Very close. But... I've come to find out I really don't like the way that engine sounds. Yeah. That engine that's, sounds that's... really, really annoying. Mm -hmm. uh, Dobby and I were both trying it out the other day, and we're just like, no, nah, I'll go back to my Dom. Even if oh, I yeah. play better with the twin mill, I'll go back to a car that doesn't make me want to plug my ears when I play. <laughs> it makes a difference. I've had, I so, hate that. I've never had a situation where I've, felt like I really like everything about this, but not the way it sounds. It'd be like running through Call of Duty or Halo or something. Like, oh, I love the way the Needler is, but I hate the sound of it, so I'm never going to use it. So why, why on earth, out of all of the drops and customizations, can you not unlock sound packs for your cars yet? That would be cool. I would like to see that. I could see that getting, like, really, really annoying. Like, the most annoying boost noise that you like a custom boost noise would just be <laughs> yeah no the whole time that, someone's that would, driving past you yeah a lot of people have suggested adding horns and i think that would be probably the worst thing you could possibly do to that game oh my god that would it. be amazing no but like custom custom engine sounds would be cool even if it was just like hey i want the sound of this car but with this car like the existing sounds that are already there you could have the core able to switch them well, you have the Mercedes yeah, pack. You can go full Mario cool. Kart with the it. The Jaguar pack. But um, the one thing I think is they'll start exploring these kind of mm -hmm. ideas once they've really saturated the other ones. Because crates are yep. going to be where they're bringing in their money. And if people already have all the kind of add-ons they want, they're not going to pay the money for the key. So that's when they're going to have True. to start introducing sound packs or I don't know what else it could. Tinted windows. Super, super sound pack crate. 
Yeah, I just got a hold of one of the player crates, which was kind of cool, except for they put in some one of the worst wheels to ever be released in it. Everybody voted on them. That's what they wanted. Everybody sucks. The people have spoken. <laughs> Those wheels are terrible. Anyway. So do you, do you think Rocket League will eventually, once they get their economy up and rolling, do you think it'll ever go free to play? No. Uh, no. There's not, no. En- not enough There's influx. There's no reason. Okay. They Did were free. It? Well, I mean, they were, they were free right off the bat from PlayStation Plus when it released. Yeah, there was that. But, I mean, they're not getting the influx of money that Dota does from its compendium. It's similar to it, how it works and how they're bringing in the money, but it doesn't bring in that kind of revenue. Yeah, that's people, kind of what I thought. People aren't paying $20 to be, have access to crates and then eventually paying another $30 to get items that aren't in the crates that go to the Ooh. crate fund. Which reminds me, I've got to buy my Battle Pass. I haven't done that for Kiev yet. Battle Pass? The Dota compendium. 2 Battle Pass. They've, well, it's not a compendium because the compendium is only for TI. The Battle Pass is for the smaller majors. So you still get a lot of the stuff that you get with the compendium, but it doesn't cost as much. So they it charge is, you to watch the majors? This no, gives you, you items and stuff too, and gives yeah, you into oh. mini games and meta games. Like you have Fantasy gotcha. Dota, where yeah. you pick the professional players and they get points based on what they do in the matches. And gotcha, gotcha. And I, I kind of obsess over that <laughs> every time it happens because you, you can play the game and unlock packs of, of trading cards and some of them will be rare foil cards so it'll be like that professional dota player but it'll be the gold foil so he'll have like buffed stats in certain areas you're like oh wait so if i do this and he gets more kills i'm gonna get more fantasy points and then i can beat my my buddy here and it's just great nice. fantasy dota <sighs> man we've come full circle i'm sorry that just <laughs> I, I'm a nerd. I'm a dork. I do fantasy fishing, but I can't endorse fantasy Dota. It Hold is on. a line for me. <laughs> You've got Are fantasy you gonna... fishing, but you can't endorse fantasy Dota. <laughs> First, I had no idea fantasy fishing was a thing. <laughs> and as somebody not at all involved in the competitive fishing scene, that is hilarious to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I follow the competitive fishing scene pretty heavy a lot more heavy than i do the competitive dota scene so i mean to and be, yeah. to the be fair is, i didn't know there was a competitive fishing scene really thought, at all no i thought you just oh, okay. like sat in your boat and fished and like <laughs> relaxed i didn't know people were like going hard oh no people are all all about it yeah God it's damn. been happening for a long big industry so, a lot of money well, so are should... you guys gonna play uh fantasy nba 2k17 damn right i'm trying out right now it'd be like fantasy fantasy nba that would be awesome. You have a fantasy <laughs> for the esports league of a real league. Yes. That oh would be my God. great. The only thing that would be better wait. is if you had fantasy for fantasy managers of a fantasy team of a esport of a real sport. Oh my yes. God. Dota team manager 2018. I would <laughs> so buy go. this game. You have no idea. I would so buy that game. God, that'd be of course you would. fucking terrible. So bad. I don't know. I mean, the football manager sells a shit ton of copies every year. Because it's soccer. Well, yeah, but soccer even if you sells. made it... Like, you could make it like rugby or lacrosse manager, and it would still sell a shit ton. Those I are don't huge think... simulation games. Madden is huge in America. I mean, it is possibly the biggest sports title in America. But the rest of the world buys FIFA so much, it is EA's top title. Unless they're bro- yeah. buying Pro Evolution Soccer, the last real game Konami will ever make. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay, we digress. That was a fucking pigeonhole from hell. Uh, but fish hole? Fish hole? It was a fish hole from hell. Um, so, Tom, have you been doing much this week? <sighs> no, actually. I'm really disappointed. It's, it seems like the work stuff that I was doing last week has kind of carried over and I'm hoping things have settled down, but I doubt it, and, and we'll see going forward. Um, I did get in... I'll, I'll, I'll do that last. So I've been playing some Dark Souls. I'm still annoyed by Ornstein and Smo, so I decided this place is fucking huge. I'm going to go explore the world, and I committed a mortal sin. Oh, no. I, I killed a puppy dog. 
a cute, adorable puppy dog that was giant, and he had a sword, and he was trying to kill me. So it wasn't completely unjustified, oh, Yeah. but I killed a puppy dog. And what's really sad is, you are like, these bosses and enemies in the game, you'll stab them a hundred times, and they're, like, angry and trying to kill you. The, the backstory of this dog, and I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't played Dark Souls, so I'm not going to go into that. Um, but it's, it's a very tragic backstory, and when he gets to, like, a fourth health, he starts limping around. He'll go to swing the sword at you, and he'll fall over and whimper like a kicked dog. Oh, and no. you're, you're just stabbing him with your tiny sword, and <laughs> it's this giant dog whimpering on the ground, and you just feel fucking horrible the whole time. But I killed him. Hold ruthlessly. On. You're saying puppy. Are you talking the big fucking wolf that I watched you fighting that carries a sword in his mouth? Yes. Okay, you are, yes. Not, you are not painting this portrait properly here. <laughs> This thing is like a big fucking gray wolf wielding a goddamn sword that is 10 stories long. It's a puppy. S- swinging the sword puppy. at you. A bigger puppy. It's a puppy. Yeah, that's not. Puppies are what I killed in the division and would always eat at my Dobby and Protrix. Clifford, the big red slaughter machine. Yeah, basically, yeah. 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 Think Clifford with a bastard sword twice his body length that he nice. swung with his mouth. I like it. No, when you initially yeah. said puppies, I'm like, whoa, I didn't know there were, like, other creatures that aren't trying to kill you in the game. I was thinking, like, the chickens from Zelda or something. <laughs> That's what no, I was well, thinking. To, I'm like, To be what? fair, to be fair, there are dogs that, like, dog-ish creatures that try to kill you early on in the game. They're, they're not just humanoids. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, I know no. there's all kinds of twisted stuff. Yes, but, but when you say the word yeah. puppy, that is loaded. Yeah. That it's is a hundred percent loaded. It's it's a big puppy, it's a, puppy. a big white fluffy puppy with a giant sword. That's what a seven year old me. calls a grizzly bear a teddy bear and tries to go hug it because it looks all big and cuddly. It's like I no, did. I died a lot, a whole lot. Did he lick your wounds and like cuddle up with you afterward, or did he oh just eat God. your dead body? Nah, he just ate me. It was bad. But I, I got into this into this cool Dark Souls mode where eventually you just stop giving a fuck and you zone into the game. You like trance into it. And every hit, I was just dodge rolling through the sword swipes. It was wonderful. Um, nice. So I played a little bit of that. Still exploring the world, still upgrading some stuff. I think I'm almost mentally prepared to try to defeat Ornstein and Smo again. Um, I have been playing Metroid Fusion. On the Game Boy Advance, and it is nice. still one of the best games I have played. It's so good. Mm. The controls are tight, they're precise, the story is absolutely wonderful. The the world, the pacing, the the SAX, the pixel, the pixel art, everything about it is just wonderful. Eric, you would agree, wouldn't you? Yes, I would ag- no, absolutely not. <laughs> I have played approximately five minutes of Metroid in my life. Yeah, really? we're, we're going to fix that. Yeah. Which one did you play? Um, Something for the GameCube. Oh, I am come a, on. Dude, the first person one? Was it Prime? Yeah. It was Prime. Yeah. I, it was a different game. I am a Metroid, I don't want to say novice, I just don't care about it. Yeah. I know a lot of people are big up on it. It's just, eh, it's whatever to me. That's true. Just like we've, been, we've been here before. We've had this, this yeah. discussion. It's so good. It's so good. I also found a, uh, a ROM hack today because I, I just clicked on a random speed run. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to sit at my desk. It's, it's the post dinner, sit around and watch YouTube. And I found that someone made Super Metroid Zero Mission. And that's Metroid Zero Mission and Super Metroid kind of smushed together. It's a Super Nintendo ROM hack. It's really good looking. I haven't played it, but it looks so good, and I'm going to have to. And they beat it in an hour and a half with 100% items. So it's, it's definitely got the Metroid levels of care put into it. Um, other than that, I played a shit ton of Dota. I played a lot of Dota. Um, there's been a... Um, you sound rather happy for playing that much Dota. Normally, when you play that time. much Dota, you kind of hate yourself, or you have no faith in humanity, or something on those lines. I know, right? Tom, Tom are you slacking on your self-loathing? Uh, I think I'm praising the sun a little too hard. I think I've yeah. become gloriously incandescent myself. 
<laughs> so I uh, wow. there's been uh, there's been a, a person um, that's been trying to get me to play Dota every time I'm in Dark Souls or every time I'm I lo- I'm logged onto Steam. He's like, hey, you want to play Dota? I'm like, I don't really have an hour. I might have an hour, but I might not. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and eventually I was just like, all right, fine. So shut down Dark Souls. Stop crying over Ornstein's Smo and me killing a puppy. And uh, let's let's play some Dota. And I was playing with a couple people that had never played before, which is just a recipe for absolute fucking That's, disaster in that Dota. That sounds terrible. So it was me, this guy, and two ran- uh, two guys I'd never played before, that, and we were all in Discord, and one random. It's just like the ultimate horrible Dota soup. And the worst thing the random said is, all right, you two guys, play like 30 bot matches and then come back to multiplayer, because you're just not ready, okay? Well, I mean, we we lost. We lost hard. It was an awful fucking game. But we just had so much fun just bullshitting and I wasn't playing support. And usually when I'm playing support, I'm just hating everyone. I'm sitting back. I'm trying to keep everyone alive. Everyone's diving under towers and just dying. And there's nothing I can do. I'm the wee little support. But he was trying to teach these other guys how to support because I guess that's what they wanted to do. So I'm playing the big hard carries, I'm rocking everyone, I'm just slaughtering endlessly. I got someone to rage quit. I killed them six times in the first ten minutes, and they quit the game. They left. <laughs> we still lost, nice. but it made me feel yeah. good. Yeah, hey. Dota's not a game that I like playing with, like, never before played people. And if I do, I'll go into bot matches with them. Never, yeah. Yeah. ever would I take someone who doesn't know what they're doing into a real match, because that is just a recipe for an hour of pure, like, awfulness. It was one of their first Dota games. They, they like, screwed around in the bot match, but didn't finish it, and then went full-fledged, all-pick, unranked. You see, now... <laughs> it I, was amazing. I know that it was annoying to people who kind of understood MOBAs, but Dota used to force you to play 10 matches before you could act and complete this tutorial before you were allowed to go to general public. Yeah, that Be- makes sense. Because I kind of like the, that. It's a game unlike any other where one person dying a lot can overpower four people doing really well on the team. Yeah. Yeah. Why that's, did they, why did they change role. it? Hmm? Why did they change it? Um, there was they a ch- lot of general outcry, and, and people hmm. like to smurf in Dota, which if you're unfamiliar with that term, because I was oh, unfamiliar uh, until I got into Dota... Um, it's where you create a separate account than your own, and mm. you usually you buy the game, but because Dota's free, you don't have to. Um, you get into Dota, and then you go to ranked, and you try to basically requalify yourself as a higher MMR initially. Because it's a mm. whole lot of work to work from the ground level of where your usually your main account sits, and yeah. to try to slowly eke up into the ranks. Because not only do you believe you are better than your number. All of your other teammates believe that, too, and they're shit. Yeah. So what will happen is you'll get all of these idiots dragging you down. So what people do is they create side accounts after they get decent and they don't want to dig themselves out of the trenches to, you know, place higher and actually have fun. Yeah. So um, pretty much MMRs in every game, 90 percent of the people think they're better than their MMR. Ten percent are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> General I'm, I'm clearly a, I'm a 7K easily. But, you know, I'm stuck in this 1.8k trench. Yeah. Easy. Sounds, sounds so brutal. So, uh, Erk, you'll, you'll know what this means. I've, I actually uh, have been playing Enchantress. Really? Yeah. I it, like Enchantress. Enchantress is fun. It can hit pretty hard. She's, she's a deer woman thing um, that, s- that yells sproing a lot. The mythical sproing. thing that uh, plays the... Uh, the uh, flute thingy in Greek myth that has like the horns and he's like half fawn, half um, human. Oh, 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 oh. It's, it's that is what it is. Only it's a female. Yeah, what is that? She's but, got rainbows and sparkles everywhere and fireflies that follow her around. Really cute. And a she hits death. like she hits like a motherfucker. Oh, my God. <laughs> Like, I walked up to some dude, I'm just like, oh, cool, I'm gonna use my cool, awesome spear spell, and he just, like, explodes into a hundred pieces, and she's just like, I love death in the forest. I'm like, holy fuck. So <laughs> it was bright, amazing. So beautiful, so dark. Yeah. It was incredible. 
But yeah, that but, that about does it for my gaming week. I had a good time playing Dota. I actually got two people to rage quit. I forgot about this. We were playing Overwatch, which is kind of one of the arcadey modes. Um, and we did, it was a, a two on two. We did Pudge and Enchantress versus these other two people. So what I would do is I would slow them. They'd get hooked in by Pudge and then I'd just spear them down to death. And that one guy rage quit. He's just like, this is such a stupid combo. I'm leaving. It's like, okay. My bad. I can't handle losing and I'm mad. I'm a bitch. <laughs> it was it was fun. It was a good time. I might play some Dota tomorrow. I just had a, a good time. And that never happens with Dota. Yeah, that game will always, always drag you down. Like, you think Dark Souls is kind of this dark, depressing place? No. No, because Dark Souls... Dark Souls makes you internalize your hate for the world. Dota makes you hate your fellow man. And yeah. that's a darker place to be. Society sucks. Society here, really here. sucks. Yeah, so, so... Eric, what have you played? So, pretty much, not a whole lot of new stuff. Um, I've been doing some Rocket League still. Been doing Neo. Uncovered a secret in there, which is kind of cool. Uh, the walls move, which is interesting. The um, walls move. Yes. Um, that's all I'm going to say. There's, there's a little s- there's secret stuff in there. It's kind of cool. That's... I don't want to spoil anything. But you, hmm. it'll explain it to you the first time you stumble into the right area, if you actually search yeah. for stuff. And then you'll be looking the rest of the time. It's kind of like um, the witness with environmental puzzles. Where once you see it, you're now going to be looking yeah. for it the whole time. Hmm. Yeah, okay. But this is something that you find. It exposes mass treasure, but also incredible Ooh. danger. This thing that, it, it's like a guardian. Risk reward kind of thing. Yes. Especially really risky, because sometimes you don't fight. Other times you're going to get full on combat. You don't know. Hmm. Until you either get utterly wrecked, or you get the gear. Players of Neo. The walls move. The walls will move. When the time comes, you'll know what to do. And um, between those, I actually got into a little bit of Stardew Valley. Finally started playing that. Oh. How is it? That game game is really, really, really good. Really? I mean, all the accolades it was receiving last year, it was 100% well-deserved. One guy... I was gonna say, Go one guy made this game, and this is the Harvest Moon that Harvest Moon always tried to be. It is so so good. I was about to ask, is it better than classic Harvest Moon? Yes. Before the team left, yes. This is right up there with the way it feels. Um, you have livestock farming. There's dungeons you have to go down into and kill slimes and shit. And the farther you go down, the better resources you can find in there to mine, to make gear. It's got a... When you start to play, you're like, oh, it has a little bit of crafting. And the further and further and further you go, you realize this game has more of a crafting system than what you thought. Hmm. It's really, really, really good. I, so is it one of those perfect, like... Oh, I've had a long day at work. I just want to relax. I want to chill. I want to maybe put on some some easy listening music and play a, a game that's not going to punish me for playing it. Yeah, this is a game that, um, if you know you have some games you like to throw on a background TV show or throw on Netflix or something and just let that go in the background, this is that yeah, kind of yeah. game. Okay, cool. It doesn't have, um, most of the time it's not fast paced, not fast paced at all. Every once in a while you get into a little combat situation that can get a little hairy, mm-hmm. but not often at all. Very, very irregularly. But it's. Is there a lot of stuff to like learn and remember, or is it one of those you just kind of jump in and play? You don't have to remember anything. Everything, oh. like quests, little sub quests that are timed and stuff like that, you get a little sub menu that flashes and you just click on it. It's mm-hmm. a little button. Click on it. It shows you, hey, here's all the quests you can do currently. So there's nothing mm-hmm. like that you have to remember. The only thing you have to remember is water your fucking plants. Yeah. Don't let that shit die because that shit's money. I haven't made it through my first full year, but I, from what I've heard is different seasons allow you to do different things. In certain seasons, you can't do other things. Like, fishing is part of the game. And you can make money on it. But, like, during the winter, fishing's mm-hmm. not going to be the same. 
So, so what's the the overall goal of the game? Um, you, uh, your fa- your grandfather's dying on his deathbed. He gives you a letter, and it says, mm-hmm. "When you grow tired of this world, open this letter." And then you find out he willed you his old farm. And um, your goal is to build this farm up because it's just really overran. Mm-hmm. And um, as you go, you get some other goals. You'll find out you kind of want to be part of this community that you're next to. So you start to get into the community, help them with things. It's, it's mm-hmm. fun. There's some political jabs in there. I mean, there yeah. were some that, I mean, it wasn't even hidden. I mean, taking <laughs> a company signature mark and throwing it on there. Oh. Yeah, that. They, they've got some stuff in there that I was like, oh, come on, low blow. But subtle DS for sissies. Yeah, they, they made that point very <laughs> clear. But it is very fun. It is very good. If you're a fan of Harvest yeah. Moon, very much so you will like this game. If you've never played Harvest Moon, um, if you like Terraria, not as much Minecraft. Minecraft's a whole lot more creating. But like Terraria, maybe yeah. you might like it. Um, it's fun. The last Harvest Moon game I got really into was on the Game Boy Color. And oh my god, I, I put probably 100, 200 hours into that game as a kid. Because, oh my god, I needed to farm all the eggplants or whatever I was growing at the time. It was like the coolest shit ever. And it was, it was kind of monotonous, but it was sort of relaxing too. It's, yep. Harvest Moon is probably the epitome of the comfy game. You go there mm-hmm. and, and you're not kicking ass, you're not destroying the world, you're you're not a mob boss or a superhero, you're just a simple farmer. Yeah. And it's, you just sit back and you do farm stuff and it's a good time. Yeah, the last one of those I got into was in PS2. But it's it's very fun. It's not a game where if you need action, you need constant stuff going on. It's not for you. Right. But it's a good chill game. Very good chill game. But if you like if you like the Sims, right? It's that yeah, sort of that kind of pacing. I can see that. Yeah, yeah that's a probably a good comparison to someone who's not familiar with the farming genre. And not farm simulator. The farming no. genre. <laughs> the farming genre. <laughs> the farming the genre. The booming farming video game genre. Man, I'm telling you, that's a gold mine right there. Just ask right that up guy. There with first person shooters. It goes first person shooters, action RPGs, farming. And I mean action yeah. RPGs <laughs> and farming are really close. Yeah. Nice. Ah. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to have to play this. I picked it up in the, uh, I think it was in the Freedom Bundle. It was in the Freedom yes. Bundle. So yeah, yeah. I, I have it. I need to install it and play it. Your wife plays it's a lot of, of it. You need to play it. Yes, she does. <laughs> oh my God, she does. That is her game. Bonding. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so I think that's pretty much all we have for the new, or the games we played. But we do have actually a decent amount of news for a pretty slow period. Uh, first of is it. a brand new game that's coming to market soon. Brought to you by the people who gave you Rogue Legacy. It is Full Metal Furies. Uh, this game is going to be a beat em up. It looks a lot like Castle Crasher. You've had a lot of time Pixel, with that one, didn't Pixel you? Pixel already. Pixel already Castle Crashers. And yes, oh my god, I played a fuck ton of Castle Crashers. <laughs> that was really the game. That we all played in college, getting everyone into the same room and screaming at the TV and laughing at the hilarious art style. And <laughs> fuck that final boss. Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit. So I never played Castle Crashers, but this one looks pretty cool. Oh, my God. Castle Crashers is so yeah. good. So um, this doesn't have the humor aspect look of Castle Crashers, but I mean, it's very uh, fast paced beat em up. It's not the Streets of Rage boring stuff. It brings more of an RPG mm-hmm. element to the beat em up. You watch well, your tone, young man. Dude, Streets of <laughs> Rage the, is a classic, but it's fucking boring. It is not boring. Streets of Rage is amazing. You get into the, you, you go into the nightclub and you're like dancing to the beat and then you like suplex some chick into a bar. Like, holy fuck, Streets of Rage is the epitome of the beat em up. It is Back the best thing ever. Oh, dude, I still play that to this day. It's oh, so good. Nice. And the music is so perfect. So All from that trailer, from that trailer I saw, you said it wasn't, it doesn't have the humor aspect of Castle Crashers, but it does seem to have like a kind of a lighthearted sort of mood to it. Like, yes, 
Um, it doesn't seem it's serious. Not, it's not, yeah, it's not serious, gritty, dark, or whatever. It's not four shades of brown and six shades of gray yeah. and no. cover well, what shooter I'm, beat em what up. I was, what I was getting at is Bethesda, not Bethesda, wow, Behemoth, sorry about that, Ooh. has a very, um, very unique and distinct humor style. They take mm-hmm. all their group games incredibly lighthearted. They make all sorts of jokes like very inappropriate jokes at all times because they don't their give a games fuck. are are fucking hilarious everything battle block theater battle yes, block every so much fun and they also have um alien hominid and pit people is uh, early access currently really fun but yes this hmm. game if you like beat em ups if you uh like the work of rogue legacy they're doing a beat em up uh full metal furies Fur- yeah, Furies. I always said Furries for some reason. Furies. Furries. It is uh, very, right. looks yeah. very good. But, speaking of very good, we have a new game launching next week that I am incredibly, incredibly ready for. Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, the reviews are out, the embargo is lifted, and people are loving this game. This game is absolutely beautiful. So as a slight refresher, Horizon Zero Dawn is a prehistoric future game where you play as a cave woman robot hunter in a jungle. Um, so some stuff came out during the review. <laughs> I like it. Okay. It's a biome-based <laughs> world, so there is different biomes in this world. Oh, okay. So that's going to be kind of interesting. I like that. Yeah, that's always good. Uh, the primary, um, very much so, the primary combat is going to be focused on your bow and arrow. You have a spear. That's cool. They say it's underpowered. But the cool thing is, um, they explain the battles is it's not walk in, kill a thing. You have this big Mm -hmm. behemoth of a robot you're trying to take down a lot of times, and they'll destroy you. So you utilize setting traps and luring these robots into these traps, as well as the robots have certain areas that do certain things. Like this might be a gun. This might be, um, I think someone hinted at a cloaking apparatus. You attack Mm -hmm. that point of the robot to disable that kind of feature of it so you strategically attack it to disable the parts you feel you need to get taken care of first okay Hmm. this is good and the arrows is very good there's different types of damage you have like straight damage and you have tear damage the way i understood it tear damage doesn't actually hurt it but it will strip away stuff i guess it'll strip away shields it'll strip away um like use items and stuff like that so it sounds like it's actually really deep in some systems. Like they have a lot of stuff going. That's perfect. That's really good to hear. This seems That's, very interesting. Yeah, especially because like a game like Skyrim is basically, you know, swing your weapon at it until it dies. Yeah. And that's pretty much as far as the depth goes. Yeah, I, and on this, it's in a big open world, an open world game like that. I really like to see more, more strategy, more depth to the actual gameplay, not just depth to the world you're playing in. Yeah, yeah. The thing it, most Western RPGs fall into is you know the the world crafting is amazing. You know, spending mm-hmm. time in in Skyrim and in Tamriel is extremely enjoyable, but you don't play Skyrim for the combat. No one plays yeah. Skyrim for the combat because the combat, frankly, sucks. And, and it's the same reason you don't play God of War for the story. The first one, yeah, because yeah. the first one's story was amazing. It was a Greek tragedy. Everything after the first one was dog shit as far as story goes. But the combat, that's why you go to God of War. Yes, yeah. it makes you feel badass. It is right there with like Ninja Gaiden with the after you do it. And like um, there's a uh, Dynasty War where afterwards you just feel yes. so oh, awesome yeah. about yourself. Because you're like, I just mowed down all of this. Literally thousands of people. <laughs> so speaking of story, and without getting into spoiler territory, not that I think that early reviews would have gone into spoiler territory, um, does it look like kind of brushing aside, eh, you're yeah, a girl and you fight robots and shit and there's biomes and, you know, whatever, dog, just kill shit. Or, or does it look, you know, a little bit deeper than that? I, I, I assume... Because of the level of polish and care they're putting into this, this is franchise material. This is going to see at least two more games. So um, two things that I've got, because I I listen to a lot of different podcasts for people who actually are well established in this business and they're given review copies to listen to and play. Mm -hmm. Um, Two things. The first is the depth of the game. 
They said that on more than one occasion, they went into a mission thinking, oh, this is the last mission. And then something happened. And it wasn't the, oh, God damn it, you're stretching it out. It was a very big turn of, okay, this has a lot more. This is really fucking cool. Hmm. And they also gave the nod that this is IP to stay. This is Sony or Gorilla Software, or Gorilla, I should say, Studios, introducing new IP. This is something that will have a sequel. And they may have nice. offshoot. It's uh, Skynet if the humans went back to the Stone Ages because of the monster or the robots. Ooh, cool. That's, Very cool. I like I liked that a lot. That hook just grabbed worried. me. Yeah, when I first saw that, I was kind of worried it would be like, oh no, we opened this portal to the past and something like that. No, from what I understood, time, this time travel sort of thing. This is a societal collapse is what I understand. Okay, it. that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's, hopefully they they don't you know copy paste from the Last of Us too too much. Yeah. Anytime uh, I hear societal collapse, I just imagine lots of zombie games getting copy pasted everywhere. Oh yeah, if, yeah. But the Last of Us did it really well. But we won't get into that yeah. again because I'll yeah. <laughs> but two things to go to this game's beauty is, or I shouldn't mm-hmm. say one's not even necessarily the beauty. It's very systems deep, and uh, there's a lot of HUD for these systems. So your screen, a lot of the reviews are saying if you if you don't do something about it, your screen gets very, very cluttered with all these HUDs. So you can't Mm -hmm. really enjoy your environment because you have all these things flashing at you and going left to right shit. So their option to it was to give you a menu where every HUD element can be turned on, off, or put as dynamic. So it's perfect. It persists constantly. It never shows up. Or if you get something that pertains to it, it flashes up for a couple seconds and then goes away. So you it sounds like this is the next best thing, you know, other than giving people a Lua scripting engine like WoW did to modify their own HUDs. Yeah. Yeah. Anything to customize HUDs, I think, is is so valuable. Yeah, and it sounds like this um, is a game you're going to be putting 60 hours in. So being able to get mm-hmm. that shit out of your sight so you can really enjoy the area you're running around in is going yeah. to help with the immersion of this game a lot. Yeah. So do you know what else did this developer do? Because I, for some reason, I'm not very familiar with the name. Uh, Killzone. They did the oh, kill zones. Okay. So this okay. is a big departure for them. Killzone was kind of cool. I mean, it wasn't great, but it was kind of cool. It was nothing at home about, but it wasn't like bad. It. it was really pretty when it came out. It yeah. was uh, one of the selling points for PS3, wasn't it? The Killzone 3 yeah. or 2? I thought it was 2. Uh, 2. I played Killzone 2. It was the most generic, most boring shooter I have played in years. <laughs> but you got a mech yeah, at one point. <laughs> it, it was pretty. It was so good looking when it came out. Oh. I didn't even think but it yeah, was that good was looking. More or less. Really? And no. They they touted it as a as a Halo killer, but Halo played better, no. looked yeah. better, sounded better, and had way better multiplayer. Yeah, the Halo killer was uh, Modern Warfare of that generation. But yeah. one more Fair thing enough. about this game that's not about this game. And here comes all the fun hype. This is the same exact engine. This beautiful piece of art is made on the same engine that Kojima is using for Death Stranding. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. So this is the introduction to look how beautiful it can get. And then here in 15 years, we'll see here's how fucked up this can get. <laughs> Speaking no, did you even, see even more did importantly? You see, uh, go ahead, Tom. Even more importantly, it gives someone else the chance to run into all the bugs and shit and Kojima yes. doesn't have to deal with it. <laughs> yes. Of making his own fucking engine. Yeah. Did you guys did you guys see that uh, Kojima did a, a little interview about Death Stranding? No, I did not. So not a whole lot was revealed, but it is going to be an actiony open world game. Okay. Hmm. So that at least narrows down some of the gameplay. How many dead whales? I don't know. From the trailer, maybe millions. Okay. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> Who knows? I don't or, know. Or they might all be the same one because you know Kojima. I, I don't know why I want Death Stranding. I still don't know why I'm really excited it's, for this it game. Was just, it was just so bizarre, it's intriguing, and you just want to experience it. And, and he, he like released Mads. is like, hey, look, we've got Mads, so it's going to be good. And I'm just like, 
I don't know why. I'm really excited. This looks amazing. <laughs> I must buy this. I know nothing about yeah. the game. There, I shouldn't yeah. be fanboying this hard, but I totally yeah. am. There is zero expectations out of this game. I mean, no one knows anything yeah. outside of it. it's Kojima, and we assume since he's no longer chained, it's going to be amazing. When in all reality, right. this shit could just be so bat shit insane that it's unplayable. Sony Sony uh, filled Kojima's trailer with a shit ton of cocaine and booze and said, "Hey, build something, okay?" And Kojima just went on a fucking bender and came out with Death Stranding. And I I could only assume that's how this project came to be. Mm-hmm. So from the interview, he said that the the most of the major framework was done, but really, it's still early in the process. I'm sure they still have to make like most of the assets. I'm I'm sure he's mostly just like uh the the concept, maybe some of the story. Yeah, so when he says framework, built I built the systems. I think he's talking the yeah. light stuff like here's what we want to see, here's what we want to do, here's the flow we want. Yeah. Right. And not the actual framework is in here are all of our skeleton models and all we have to do is yeah. put render or render them with this and that. Because yeah, that right. was the case, they could have this out by end of year, early first quarter next year. As as anyone who's a, a hardcore Metal Gear fan knows, Kojima likes to take his sweet, sweet ass time building things. And the only reason Metal Gear's, you know, the Metal Gear games got released as fast as they did and as frequent as they did is because Konami was breathing down his neck and you know threatening him every single step of the way. So I really yeah. hope Sony backs off and lets him remain unchained. Just let him run free. Let him go nuts. You mean like they that's, did with No Man's Sky? That said, no. No, yeah. God, no. Kojima has an established track record of not being a hack. Right? <laughs> Hello Games did not. Um, and yes, I know those were, those were fighting words. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of afraid because even with Kojima on the rails, the story of Metal Gear Solid makes no goddamn sense whatsoever. It's like you took a soap <laughs> opera and the most convoluted anime and a, in like the super a whole bunch he- of political stuff, a whole bunch of political stuff. And like the Marvel and DC universe's most convoluted backstories and smushed it all together. And then you, and you pushed out to fans and said, hey, try to make sense of this. Go have fun. And now Sony's yeah. saying, um, we can let him out in the yard. Go, go have fun. Go have fun. See what you can come up with. It's like taking a dog straight no out chance. of a. It's like taking a pit bull straight out of a dog fighting operation and taking him off the leash in the middle of a dog park. Yeah, we have no idea what he's yeah, going to do. It'll be fine. This it'll be great. This could be the most incomprehensible bullshit we've ever seen. It's like, what can go wrong? Five minutes later, there's pieces of a pomeranian over the fence. Yeah, I, I'll probably buy this day one. I don't buy anything day one. I will probably have this. Oh hell no, man! I'm not. I may have to wait months before I buy this. <laughs> Uh, I believe I believe in Kojima. Yeah, that wasn't even part of our news thing, but yeah, yeah. side rail, love it because it's <laughs> Kojima and hell yeah, why not? Um, Zelda has a partially lifted embargo when it comes to uh, nice new review news. So reviewers were told that they could release information up to the first five hours of the game, as long as it yeah. was not part of this 150 point. Actually, I think it was like 40 point list they got of things that are not allowed to discuss. <sighs> hmm. What the wow. fuck, Nintendo? I, I kind of get it. This is something big and new. No. And they, they want there to be no. some surprise for people. No. It's not like someone's going to post a goddamn walkthrough. These are reviewers. They know their audience. Their audience doesn't want to get the, the game totally spoiled for them. They're not going to say, hey, Link is secretly a girl. Oh, it's a Metroid throwback. By the way, it's not a Zelda <laughs> game. It's actually a Metroid game, and it makes people happy. Nintendo A wouldn't make people happy. Uh, and B, reviewers aren't going to spoil that shit. Uh, well, it's th- not for me a thing of spoiling the story. I could care less about the story, because I'm in the minority here, where stories typically don't drive my gameplay. Um, it would be a system for me. If there's this brand new system to have in a Zelda, that that kind of oh shit moment when you stumble upon a system yourself rather than some mm-hmm. reviewer telling you about a system in a review mm-hmm. I no, like- that's it that's the worst idea ever because what if that what if that system is by the way guys just just like what happened after jet grind radio came out and and the whole tony hawk fiasco with everything now every character has to grind on shit what if nintendo says 
we got it because they're perpetually 10 to 15 years behind. What if they said Link uses his leaf as a skateboard and he grinds on shit? It's the best system ever. <laughs> but reviewers, you can't talk about it. And that's 40 hours of this game. Like after hour five, you get your skateboard and that's the next 55 hours of this game is Link grinding on shit. But you're not allowed to talk about it. Well, Im- it was- embargoes of any kind on reviews are absolute dog shit. See, the thing is, though, it's not going to be like that. And here's the thing. If that if there's a brand new system, even if they tell you about it, the game's not changing to remove it. So I'd rather find it myself. Or, oh, I wouldn't, though. I wouldn't, though, because if, some, well, if a reviewer says, hey, Link has a skateboard for 55 hours of your 60 hour game, I'm just not going to buy it. I don't want to no, spend 60 bucks right. to figure out it sucks. No, they can tell you the game sucks. They can tell you all that stuff. There's lists of things they can't. So maybe there's systems they're not allowed to talk about because there's this new system that's never been in the Zelda game and they don't want it spoiled. This seems this really Releasing seems like system. review cur- curation. It's Nintendo saying, hey, this well, probably maybe. isn't going to get high marks. No, so we're going to keep this back. No, it's keeping some stuff to not spoil it for your audience. I mean, honestly, system spoilage is just as bad as spoiling gameplay or spoiling a story. If there's a new system, yeah. I want to stumble upon that. I don't want to know that there's some random ass system for merging weapons together. If I don't already know of it. I want to stumble upon that and have that awe moment of, oh my God, I can merge these two things together to make this amazing thing. This That's is why I'm moment. doubly happy that I didn't pre-order anything Nintendo. I'm going to wait until Christmas yeah. to, to suss this stuff out because then we'll get actual reviews instead of this stupid curated bullshit. It, it's like EA locking or uh, uh, Bethesda locking people in a room. I think it was Bethesda anyway, to review Fallout 4. They said, hey, you guys have got 40 hours. Here's a hotel room with perfect PCs built exactly for this game and, and perfect, perfect copies that we stripped all the bugs out of. Um, go and play this and review it. And everyone's like, oh, it's great. And then the game came out and they're like, wow, this is dog shit. <laughs> well, right? It's like people, it's I like mean, the reviewers reviewing the newest Sim City game and they're like, oh, this is actually decent. And then EA, you know, pulls the covers on the Frankenstein of the actual game and, and pushes out the right. door and it's absolute dog shit. Full scale reviews are still going to happen pre release. This is like a two tiered yeah. embargo, is what's happening. It's it's a week before the game releases. People have review copies. They've already reviewed the game. Nintendo's not going to give them a second game to review. No, 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 no. It's not a second game. Let the, guy, let the guys is, write. No, they're allowed to write. The thing is, they don't want all these details released of new systems and stuff a week ahead. They want to release maybe a day or two ahead. Yeah, right after people have gone to GameStop and thrown down their 60 bucks and can't get it back later. Yeah, because people wait till the week before Zelda to pre-order. That's why. <laughs> Right. That, if you're pre-ordering, you've had it pre-ordered the, for over a month. And yeah, it, there's, pretty much. And there's, there's a timeout where you can go get your money back. I, this, in any case, this is shady practices. This is absolutely shady. Any review embargo is, is just anti-consumer. There's no other way around it. No, yeah, the, the, the developers can make all kinds of excuses about spoiling story or systems. It it's, doesn't help the end user. It doesn't help the person plunking down the money to buy this game. The fact that they're only allowed to review five hours of the game, even though they have the whole game in their possession, mm-hmm. no, means, no, 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 no. You know, I, only- I automatically think that the last 55 hours of this 60-hour game, presumably, is going to be awful. Either that, or the game is six hours long, and they can't tell you about that last hour. Right? Because no, no, no. they said, so- oh, we can only tell you about the first five, six of the game. That's not at all how this is. They're allowed to give their opinion on the entire game. They can't talk details about things outside of the five hours. So this isn't, so, this isn't putting so more think, eyes over people. The reviewers can still tell you, right. this game sucks, don't buy it. So that's so not about a playing concern. Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, think about playing Metal Gear Solid 2. Think about the first time you realized that you were going to play as Raiden for the whole game. Yeah, and if a, if a reviewer said, hey, by the way, there's this weird switch, and you play as a guy you actually hate the whole game, some people wouldn't have bought it, because some people bought it right. to play as Solid Snake, and I totally get that, and they are 100% justified to do that. Now, I don't think Raiden was the worst character in the world. I don't think he was a great character. No. I don't really like the guy. Would I have preferred to play as Solid Snake? Absolutely. Would I have bought the game anyway? Yeah, probably, because it's Metal Gear Solid 2. Why the fuck wouldn't you buy it? That said. Someone should know what they're getting into. 
And the fact that a game company is saying, you know, is, is dictating what they can or cannot say in a review is anti-consumer. Okay, so you're telling me you would have been okay reading a review for The Last of Us knowing that Switch mid-game was going to happen? I would have killed a reviewer that said that in a review. I no, would have there's, there's found him and been pissed. That is the same exact between... thing you just explained. Playing <laughs> no, as it's another not, player. It's not. The, the fact that you play as Raiden in Metal Gear Solid 2 is not a, a, a major pivotal plot point in a story, right? There's nothing spoiler territory about that, because if you watch trailers for like three seconds, you're like, huh, I'm not playing as Snake. This no, is kind of weird. Nothing was in the trailers, though. The only trailers they showed was all the Snake gameplay. I don't Nobody think saw that coming. The story. Nobody saw that coming. The fact that we're telling game companies they're not allowed to have any shock and awe in their games is bullshit and well, taking away from their no, their creative that, direction. That's not it. That's so not that, it at that all. being said, though, if if you don't, if you want to go into a game blind, don't read all the reviews. Well, the thing yeah. is, they're not read the part it's, that it's says why, how good it is. Don't read the whole review. Read it's the why score. I don't watch movie trailers for shit I know I'm going yeah. to see. It's because That's the movie true. trailers constantly give away the best parts of the movie, and then you're left there <laughs> like, oh yeah, I remember seeing that joke the six times this trailer was on TV. That's mm-hmm. it's lost its its impact now. Um, I yeah, don't you, you can totally do the same thing for games, and you can you know hit you know page down and go oh. Eight out of ten. Yeah, I guess I could buy that. Oh, look, it's four out of ten. Yeah, probably not going to buy that. You're listening to a podcast at one and a half times speed, and all of a sudden they're talking about the new shit in Zelda. You don't have time to turn that off. They're just talking I, about systems. It's not got story. A button. You've got a button. You can you can hit. Yeah, bars. you, you, you can got a button it. when you it's can... in your pocket and you're driving. Get good, son. Get good. <laughs> what, I, what I'm getting at is the fact it's. You say it's anti-consumer. It's also just as much anti-developer to say you can't hide stuff, that you can't surprise your customers with stuff. That is also anti-them. I think, I think if a reviewer wants to go and put detailed pictures, if they want to do a review where literally they play the entirety of the game in a YouTube video and say, hey, we're going to speed this up 4x for you. Or or better yet, here, this is our 60-hour review on YouTube, and you can see every little detail of this game that should absolutely be, be the, the God-given right of the reviewer. They should absolutely be able to do that. And the game developers should have no right to tell them, yes, you can, or no, you can't. Because if I want to research that, if I want to see a Let's Play of Breath of the Wild, I should absolutely be able to. And then they should be able to not send out a review copy. But That's anyway. Fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> no, it's not fine because you already bitched about that once. Anyway, we did get sidebarred. <laughs> um, but the Zelda stuff is looking really, really, really fucking good. Um, I was watching some footage of it earlier today. Uh, you don't have one horse anymore. There's no more, what is it, pon- Pony, Ponya, you know, I'm talking about. Pony Tata. Oh, wait, no. No, not, not, not a Pokemon. <laughs> this a is Pona. not a Pokemon. Oh, my God. Pona. You guys are bitching about Zelda and defending Nintendo, and you're not even real fans. You don't even know what the fucking horse is called. I quit. So, I quit. So, anyway, um, the horse isn't in this. Well, I shouldn't say it like that. I don't know that for sure. But you ride random horses. You will mount horses in the wild, sneak up on them, and tame them kind of pseudo um, Red Dead Redemption style, hmm. which is interesting. Um, they showed some uh, cool combat game footage where like, it'll actually tell you the um, weapon grade. Like, You take a hit, all of a sudden your weapon gets damaged even more. You can throw that weapon. So you can just nice. bail on a weapon that's already been diminished. Um, dodging at the right time will allow you to get into a um, slow-mo state where you could do rapid attacks on your enemy. There's a lot of cool little systems they're showing that are really, really cool and really new to Zelda. Yeah, likewise, same as when we were talking about uh, Horizon. That extra depth of gameplay is really, really going to help this, I think. Yeah, this is taking it to territory where Zelda's never, ever been. I mean, this is actually I, putting it in full open world RPG style. I will absolutely refute that all day long. You know where, you know where this takes Zelda? This takes Zelda back to Zelda 1, 
where they yeah. said, hey, and lots of people have said this on, on YouTube videos and reviews and other things. Breath of the Wild takes Zelda back to the era where they said, hey, you're in a fucking field. You didn't even have a sword. Go. No, no, no. What okay. do I do? I don't know. Just go. Yeah, well, they, what's over there? I don't know. Figure it out. They take that way, yes, but I'm talking item wise. You are getting all these different weapons with all these deteriorating properties. You have to constantly be switching through different weapons, not just three swords and three shields. Right. You have an entire loot thing with you. You have oh, some of the other Zelda games that had this multiple arrows to do different types. They're doing this cool system that was introduced in Halo 5. Where when you're aerial and aim, you will hover in place so you don't go up or down. It'll slow-mo it so you can aim and shoot mid-air on like dismounting any pony or the horse and stuff. It looks like the weapon system is just an expanded Wind Waker-esque weapon system with uh, added inventory and weapon degradation. And I, I will say, degrading weapons is never a good idea in any game. Ever. No matter um, what. I don't even like it in Dark Souls. The uh, weapons, the way they had it here, um, um, it's you recycle them. You don't stick to a weapon. You don't get this sword. This is going to be my sword. You will keep a good sword in your back pocket for a boss fight and then run through all these other swords while you're going. All weapons are ammo, ammo pretty much. I kind of like this concept. I don't. I've never liked weapon degradation. I mean, maybe it sort of makes sense in Dark Souls because the world is fucking oppressive and the fact that your sword gets shitty after a little bit is pretty oppressive. <laughs> it sort of fits the theme, but uh, I've, I've never liked it in any other game I've played. I, it's like uh, Far Cry 2, for instance. You know, I shoot some guy with this awesome shotgun like three times and then it fucking jams. I'm like, this isn't immersive, it's just annoying. Yeah. You're picking up lots of weapons on the way, though, so it's not like, oh, shit, I don't have a weapon. Like, the guy I was watching, his rusty sword got incredibly damaged, so he threw it at the enemy and switched to the next sword. Mm -hmm. So, is, is there going to be a... Uh, I guess they probably didn't say, but is there going to be a lot of variance between, like, uh, the strength of a weapon? I did not is... get into being able to see that. The actual, because I like, could how see deep that the RPG being, is. I could see that being a point... Because it's an open world game. So if you stum stumble upon this incredible, amazing sword, and then the whole game becomes easy because you can just like barrel through it with a, a super overpowered weapon. Or even worse, even worse, you stumble upon this incredible sword and you're like, mm -hmm. ooh, I should probably fucking save this. And yeah. then, then and it then turns into this. It. <laughs> yeah, then it, it turns into this Final Fantasy issue where yeah. you get to Sephiroth and you've got 600 potions because you were too afraid to use one of them just in case you might need. See, yeah. I like that. I like having that kind of system where it's actual management. You can't just lollipop your way through and just use whatever's best all the time. You have to mm -hmm. weigh it. And if you don't use your good shit and you have too much of it at the end, suck it the fuck up. And next time you play it, learn it. Because <laughs> people, it's a Zelda. People will play this more than once. But maybe that's maybe. enough for Zelda. There's been some more information on Switch, the, the Switch. Um, let's start with the fun news. Last week, we talked to you guys about um, someone got their hands on a Switch way too early. At the time, Whoops. it was posed as a, a misshipment that mm -hmm. a company shipped this in air. It was since found out that an employee at an at a actual company stole this and sold it to the individual. Holy so, shit. So Nintendo reached out to the person and got a hold of the guy who got the uh, stolen system, and he mm -hmm. sent it back to Nintendo. I hope they, well, I don't know what they'll do with him, but the guy who stole it has been fired from his job, and he's going to be facing criminal charges. Good. Nintendo is going at this guy. Good. Because they were not happy about that getting released <laughs> that early. Yeah. Nothing damning, just they were not happy. Um, so that's, I wonder what the what the charges would be. So it, it was stolen, though, right? Yes, um, it okay. was stolen. That's, he stole that's it. receiving stolen property. Oh no, no, that guy. There, there's no say that he's getting charges pressed. The person who stole okay. it just getting, the guy stealing. Okay, well that's yeah. easy. Yeah. That's, that's an open shut that's, case. Yeah, if See, you fucking uh, stole it, you go to jail. Upon now first, you're dead. upon first hearing, I was like, oh, the guy turned it back in. You know, maybe Nintendo do something to him. But then I'm thinking, this guy recorded a video of it. He knew what was going on. 
he knew he had no business having that console. He's lucky Nintendo was nice. True. Because if you're witty enough to understand I shouldn't have this, let's put a video up, you're probably witty enough to know I just bought something that was stolen. Yeah. Because <laughs> companies and, don't I mean, make that. Dude, you've, you've, got a, you've got a game system. Why get yourself caught for useless internet points and fame when you right. can keep it and play Zelda? Well, right. you're, you're, under, you're forgetting one thing. It's like getting. Yeah, they're all online and they're all tracked and they're going to geolocate his IP from a serial number and then send Nintendo assassins to get one dressed as Link, one dressed as Samus, one dressed as Captain Falcon, and they're going to kill him Smash Brothers style in his home. They're going to hit him with the Wombo combo. They are. Um, I Happy was, feet, where you at? I was that more ain't Falco. getting at the fact of congratulations, you have a console. What are you going to play? Yeah. It's like having a TV with no consoles, no cable. You can just turn it on. Yeah, it's but the pointless. settings menu probably looked really nice. The settings menu did look nice, but see, what we need to do for Tom is get him a console and just see if he's happy. Let him be happy with that console. That's it. Nothing you know, more. Just the console. I don't think I would, though. The last console I really, really loved was the fucking GameCube. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hated my 360, A, because I had to replace it four times, and B, because after all the updates, it was a slow, bloated piece of shit. Um, my PS3, you know, went from, wow, this is a great game system, to every time I plugged in a goddamn disc, it's, uh, I think I'm gonna download something now. No, 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 just let me play, uh, yeah, I'm gonna download seven gigs. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. And it, of course, it, it acted like it was on dial-up the whole time, you know, just petering out gigs and gigs. Eh, I'll never get to play now. Uh, yeah. yeah. Switch comes out next Friday, and I am actually considering um, taking a vacation day. Picking it up on midnight on go. Thursday. That's the spirit. I'm debating on it, but I have Rising Hero Horizon Zero Dawn, so, and I won't be able to play the Switch when I first get it anyway, so. Because yeah, someone I else. Guess you just be... have to take two vacation days. <sighs> Damn. Damn. <laughs> Life's rough sometimes. Damn. And let's continue on our Switch roll. Um, mm -hmm. They have announced that the Virtual Console will not be released on launch. This is the second console in a row that Virtual Console will not be there. The interesting point to this is they said that GameCube games would be available on launch. So it sounds like That's they're, cool. like they're going to have to walk that back since the virtual console is not there. But hmm. at least there's hope once the virtual console gets there, GameCube games will be on there. Now, but hey, this, this does mean that we can finally get a re-released version that we can play on a modern console of the greatest GameCube game to ever grace our presence. And yes, I am referring to Luigi's Mansion. Fuck nice. You. I thought you were going to say Super Mario Sunshine. Also, fuck you. I, either, either way. I, actually, I really love Luigi's Mansion. It was a kid's version of Resident Evil. It was so good. Yeah. There wasn't a whole lot of games that I played on there. I played a lot of Smash. Um, Resident Evil 4 has been widely acknowledged that the GameCube had the best version of that game. Oh, yeah. Really? By I far. I didn't know that. By far. What made it so much better? It was designed for the GameCube. Um, so we're going to detour into some gaming history. All right, you, you guys ready for this? Okay. So back in the day, Nintendo actually had decent relations with third party publishers. They hadn't completely fucked over everyone yet or released an underpowered GameCube version too. Um, but Nintendo decided to partner up with Capcom, and they decided to announce and start developing the Capcom 5, which was five exclusive to GameCube, exclusive to Nintendo games that were going to just blow the lid off of everything. Turns out, like, two of those games launched, and one was a pile of shit, and the other one was Resident Evil 4, which eventually made its way to the PS2, and then eventually made its way to the PC, but because it was developed and, and built for the GameCube specifically, it didn't really run very well on the PS2. The controls were a little mm. wonky. It wasn't a great port. And the PC port was just fucking awful. Um, it was, you know, kind of back in the day when you could take console ports and like, ah, maybe we'll port this to PC. And you just kind of try to make it run and, and don't worry about stuff like controls or 
Um, you know, making sure the A button shows up as like an actual keyboard key. <laughs> so, you know, it, not not a good port. Right. Ah, uh, yes. But regardless, VC, not there. Now, all we can hope is that once I get this sorted out, people won't have to buy Super Mario Brothers for the third straight fucking console. <laughs> well, um, I have I have endlessly ranted about Nintendo's virtual console policies. Why the fuck do people have to keep rebuying stuff? And I, I know they, they yeah. eventually fixed that where where if you bought it on one Wii U, it would eventually move to the other Wii U instead of you having to buy all of your stuff over for a new console. Yeah. But Nintendo seriously needs to get out of this internet in 1998 fiasco they've been in for the past <laughs> 20 years. There's yeah. hope. They're doing weird shit with the phone, but there's hope that you can already, for everyone right now, you can go register your Nintendo account now and get the username you want. So if you have something that's not going to be there long, get there now mm-hmm. and get it. Navi Lover 69 No. <laughs> okay. Wow. And that'll do it with our Nintendo Minute. So, um, on to a little bit of, um, odd, sad news. Um, typically streamers don't hit mainstream news. It's something you see on some gaming sites, you'll see on Twitch and that's it. But, um, I'm not going to do this guy justice. So I'm not going to go into too much details, but, um, someone was streaming a 24 hour charity stream and he died during his stream. Hmm. Kind of weird. Um, heavy smoker, heavy drinker, I guess right now they're thinking cardiovascular, but. For you other streamers out there, be careful with your 24-hour streams. Yeah. Uh, yeah from is... what I saw from the article, a lot of it could have been uh, sleep deprivation related to. Yeah. And all the health issues that come from long-term sleep deprivation. Yeah. Sleep deprivation is known to cause cardiovascular issues, which are also caused by smoking. And he was known to chain smoke on streams. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This, it's, it's tragic. It's unfortunate. It sounds like it probably wasn't unforeseen. And it's yeah, sad, with, yeah. especially yeah. since he was in the middle of a charity stream where yeah. this was yeah. going to, uh, I think it was a, I can't I remember if it was some kind of research or something, but it was an actual, he wasn't taking the money that was coming in. Yeah. So it's always a shame seeing people doing good things to have this kind of stuff happen. Yeah. So we lost one. But I, I'm really hoping that the the media doesn't turn this into, you know, video games kill man no. while no, donating to cancer charity. No, every every media outlet I've seen has spun this yeah. in. He had bad life decisions, but he was doing a good thing. They always stress the okay. charity yeah. stream of yeah. it. Okay. Mainly because people I, I just know... I know when I was a kid, anytime anything right, bad happened yeah. and video games were in the remote vicinity of the bad thing, it was always the game's fault. I think a lot of that has died down. Yeah, and this is also a weird I one hope. because a lot of elders are not used to the idea of what streaming is. And the question mm-hmm. arises, why was this guy playing 22 hours straight of video games? Doesn't he have a job? And that kind yeah, of stuff yeah. comes up. Right. So, But that's it for that. Let's get back to fun stuff. Mass Effect Andromeda. That is going to be the last game that comes out in the first quarter that is going to completely steal my life. <laughs> um, so far, reports are the scope of this game are gigantic. Uh, the world is going to be substantially larger than that of the first. And dialogue-wise and voice acting-wise, from what this one uh, article I was reading said, the, one of the smaller role players in your party has more dialogue in this game than Shepard had in the first. So nice. it's really impressive. So it's this... really impressive. And um, I was reading this game. You're going to beat the game. And then after you beat the game, you can still go back and do all this other stuff. It isn't game over, have to restart. This is games over hmm. GTA style. Go do whatever side missions you still have. Oh, wow. And that all but two of the That's missions nice. will not be locked to you. There's, they said there's two missions that are very, very minuscule side missions that after a certain point mm-hmm. in the campaign, you won't be able to get back to. Yeah. Which is really cool. Um, they're doing some stuff with uh, Mission Discovery, where they're not going to do the typical open world thing of show you everything you can do right away, because they understand mm-hmm. how overwhelming that's going to be. 
So they're going to slowly wean you into different things that you have available to you mission wise, rather than punching you in the face. Good. GTA style of we're going to drop you in this map. You have 20 fucking icons and you walk in a circle for five minutes because you don't know what you're going to first. Right, right. I'm kind of I'm kind of worried about the only locking you out of two missions and having them be relatively minor. That that makes me fear that your choices won't actually matter because if they really mattered, you could like block off segments of the game. Right. I, um, I mean, that didn't happen too too much in the other yeah. Mass Effect games. It happened a little bit, but the fact that they made a point of saying, "Yeah, you're not going to get locked out of content," just means people probably won't play through this multiple times because they can see everything the first time around. One what of my it? favorite parts about Mass Effect was, you know, going through as the Boy Scout and going through as the royal asshole to everyone. And it was great because I could punch a newswoman in the face. It's also, <laughs> though, I think, uh, call out to this game is so big. We know people won't be able to put the time commitment to do it more than once. So your changes still might have big effect. But mission-wise... <sighs> I don't know. I played through uh, all three Mass Effect games, which was like a I put maybe 150, 180 hours of content, you know, two times. Yeah, but you're talking playing three games two times over five years, not one game. Right. I and mean, this how many, one, how this many hours one, are they saying? I haven't got an hour number yet, but this okay. the scope of this game, though, they're making it sound like this is going to be gigantic. Mm-hmm. I'm cautiously optimistic. I would like to see what the, the DLC scheme is for this game. I, I don't want it to be anything like Mass Effect 2 or 3, where there's like a billion DLCs, and if you buy it all, you're paying like 600 bucks. I think um, yeah. they've realized if they're going to do a lot of DLC, it's best to do it in the season pass mode or something like that. Yeah, that would be okay. And then, you know, a year after the game comes out, they say, hey, here's the complete real edition. Go buy it for 60 bucks, and I'll probably pick it up then. Maybe. I like Mass yeah. Effect, but I, I don't want to put up with all the bullshit that comes with Mass Effect. There's, it, it's weird in the game industry now. You have some games that are holding value incredibly long. And then you have others that are cutting it right away. This is oh, a yeah. game. I mean, Doom, it, Doom went to 30 bucks. It cut its price in half right after yeah. it launched. But th- yeah. this is EA. EA is not going to cut prices. because EA's a, Yeah. And it's not necessarily them being an evil thing. They're just a big company that's going to be doing a lot of content. So they're not going to give you this game cheaper. And Mass Effect does right. hold its value. But I mean, I, I'd like to see like, you know, a, a sale on... On Steam, I mean, it won't be Steam, it'll be Origin, Origin. Sale or something, yeah. where they say, hey, you can buy Andromeda, and here's every piece of DLC that we have ever released, ever, and it's like 70 bucks. I'd be like, yeah, okay, that's fair. If it but wins I, I Game don't, of I the don't Year, get... you'll see that. If it wins Game of the Year, you will yeah. see that. But, I mean, someone or... someone on, on the back of a napkin is going to write Mass Effect Andromeda Game of the Year, and they're going to put that sticker on the back of the box, and... Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll get a game of the year edition, regardless of if it wins anything or not. No, what I'm saying, if, like, if DICE gives it to them or some, a big organization says that, that next mm-hmm. day or that next week, they will run, here's the game, 25% off, or here's the game yeah. for 70 bucks, here's the game plus all the DLC we've made this year. Yeah. Companies tend to do that. Um, was it Steam that did some sales with the, I can never remember what video game awards it was two months ago. They were running sales for the games that were nominated. They did. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, video game awards, especially like DICE is the Grammys, it's the Oscars, it's the Academy of the Video Game Industry giving video game awards. So it is Mm -hmm. very much in that vein, but there is a lot of good marketing that goes around it that gets us games cheaper if you go digital. No matter what EA wants, I will be playing this on Steam. Regardless of how they pitch it, regardless of where I buy it, I'm going to add that executable into Steam, and I'm going to use Steam's in-home streaming to play it on my Steam gaming PC. There you go. I might have bought it through Origin, but I'm going to play it on Steam. For the record, (laughs) and those who don't know, if you do Steam in-home streaming, in reality, all you're doing is streaming your PC through a pretty much a net protocol that they're using inside of Steam. So you can downsize big picture and do whatever you want on your computer from your TV. It's really cool. So you can play 
any origin game you want through Steam Streamy if you kind of walk around it to get to your desktop. But just a little I know, hack tip. I know a guy that he has added Steam and Chrome into basically his home server that he runs headless. And he uses Steam in home streaming because he added Chrome into Steam before he disconnected the monitor. He uses Steam in home streaming to pop up Chrome so he can modify like the service interface on, on the, the web, basically the internal web page on the server. He can work on that on his laptop through Steam in home streaming. He uses it as an RDP session. Rather than doing it's, a v, uh, VPN, not a VPN, but like an SSH in or something like that. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's ridiculous. I'm sure it's not as secure, but yeah, it gets the job done for in-home. Who cares? Yeah, it, it works. Uh, speaking of um, stuff going cheap, we have a free super game cheap. coming up this weekend. and Super, super cheap. This is going to be, I think, like 40% off this weekend if you buy it. But Call of Duty, um, what is it? I can't remember the name of it. Infant Warfare. Infinite Warfare. God damn, I'm yeah. bad. Um, <laughs> it is free this weekend to try up until 1 p.m. Pacific time on Sunday. This is the newest Neat. COD. This is the top grossing game of last year, even though it's been acclaimed as not as good. But yeah. um, it is free. And this is actually a trend I'm starting to really like seeing in the um, yeah. gaming community. There's a lot more open Absolutely. betas. There's a lot more free weekends for new game. I mean, we all got in on the Titanfall 2 uh, open bait or open um, free weekend they had. Yeah, I'd love to see more free weekends, especially because there are so few demos available to play. I think these free weekends really give people the opportunity to play something before they buy it. Tom and I were actually just talking about that, about yeah. how this is actually good for the developer and the customer because there's no longer mm -hmm. de demos being made. But instead, you just put maybe a wall up and don't give them all the features, but say, hey, here's this game for the weekend. Play it. Yeah. yeah. It, it takes. So in the case of uh, Infinite Warfare, they're not giving you the campaign. They're giving you the multiplayer. But let's be honest, mm -hmm. if you're buying Call of Duty today, yeah. you're probably not buying it for the campaign. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it costs a lot of development resources to take some stuff out, chunk up a really nice demo, package mm -hmm. it up, put it out. And let's say you put out a demo and there happens to be some bug in there of your great game. It runs like shit or doesn't even run at all people are gonna go oh my god i'm not buying this this is awful yeah but if you've already released the game if it's out there if you want more sales if you want more people exposed to your game you just say eh we'll unlock it on steam or origin for the weekend whatever have people play it we'll, we'll kick them out mm -hmm. afterwards digital distribution makes this a reality this is yes. awesome you don't have to it's put perfect you don't have to put any more money into your development cycle you just say yeah 48 hours Go have fun, enjoy it, and, and then take it away. And then when someone's in the middle of a multiplayer match, like, oh, fuck, time ran out. But I was having a great time. Fuck yeah. it. They throw 60 bucks at the screen. Now they've got Call of Duty. Yeah. This is, this yeah. is great for everyone. This is I would have never played Titanfall 2 if they didn't do that free weekend. Exactly. I would have never played it at all. And had, had, if I were more into first-person shooters, I might have bought it. That game was really good. That was super yeah, tight. It's great. Super it was fucking really tight game. I hope oh. they start. We've seen this a lot with multiplayer games. I don't know of any single player games off the top of my head that offered a free weekend. Um, um, Steam is notorious for doing this maybe once every couple months. I remember about three years ago. Yeah, it would have been three years ago. Actually, four. I lied. Anyway, I'm an old bastard. Um, they did a free weekend with Civ 5. And oh, this is actually wow. how I ended up buying Civ Five with all the expansions, but one. It was right before they released the last expansion. Yeah. Oh, um, nice. They had a free weekend, and I played a game of Civ. And me being me, I put max enemies, max map size, max everything. Yep. So after playing Your this game... Your entire weekend was gone. 20 hours, <laughs> one match. I've gotten to the tipping <laughs> point where I'm now like dominating, but I still got another 15 hours to go. And my weekend's yeah, wow. up. But the golden, so, the beautiful thing about free weekends, the game's always on sale during the free weekend. Yeah. Get you hooked, get you to see the deal, buy the game. Exactly what happened Absolutely. to me. Exactly what happened to me with Civ. 
I would love like a big story driven RPG. Like I would I, I know this will never happen, but I would love for a Mass Effect free weekend and I get, you know, 15, 20 hours into the game and there's this pivotal plot point and oh my god, my choices are mattering and I have to know what happens next and the timer expires and I get a pop up box that says give me your credit card or else Commander <laughs> Shepard dies. I'm just like, oh my god, and I throw my wallet at the TV. I would love to see more single-player games do that. On the other hand, uh, if you have a single-player game like Doom that doesn't have a really long campaign, there's mm-hmm. plenty of people who would play through it once and be done with the game at that point. I'm not one yeah. of those people. Majority there, are, though. Yeah, I but there are those people. More, that works better for multiplayer games. You have to think about, too, if you're going to do something like that with a single-player game, think about how many mobile phone games do that. Yes, yes, that's a huge issue. Not exactly seen in positive light most of the time. Yeah, I think most of the stories, so, what, they give you an hour before you can refund it? It's less than that now, though, for, like for that. games. But in, in some mobile games that you can generally complete the whole game within an hour, you buy it, you play through it, you refund it. It's a fucking dick move. Fuck you for doing it. Mm-hmm. But you can't do it. It's the same people that buy games on Steam and the games are two hours long and then they return them within Steam's refund window. I, kind of a dick move. I get it in some cases. The only way you're going to see this for your shorter one player game is if they don't do a free weekend, they say, hey, noon Eastern up until five Eastern, you can play this game for free. We'll let you preload it. But you only get this five hour window. Have fun. I, I could I could see it work for bigger games. Mass Effect, Skyrim, Dark Souls, and definitely more towards the RPG side of things, less mm-hmm. so towards the first person shooter side of yeah. things. And I don't think all demos are going away. For instance, have, have either of you played the Stanley Parable demo? Yes. No, I have actually. It's surprisingly, great. it's great because yeah. it's it's not the the game. It has literally nothing to do with Stanley Parable the game. It just shows some of the mechanics and some of the fun things that you could be doing if you had the Stanley Parable. Well, it's like Resident yes. Evil Seven had a really good demo. So demos aren't done, and I think demos still serve a place for that shorter experience to get people in the door to kind of feel the game yeah. out. Absolutely. So. I think sing- single players definitely more just make a demo. Even like uh, what Inside did. You basically play the beginning, the beginning of the game that cuts off at a certain point. Yeah. You buy the game, you can continue where you left off. Yeah, I like games. That's that a great ledge. way to build that. And demos, I like it when it is the first level and a half. And then they mm-hmm. tell you, this is the point we have to stop you. If you buy this, yeah. your progress is saved and you continue. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Especially if it's a wonderful. demo that you'd spend two hours on. I hate throwing time into a game yeah. and repeating. It's like yeah, how yeah, I used yeah. to be with the games, the old games when you would die and have to go back to your save. Yes. If, if you Jesus. haven't saved in two hours and you just got past this really hard <laughs> boss and you realize you didn't save, that's the instant fuck you, I'm not playing you for another month. Yeah. Right. Uh, but that's free this weekend. Suggest you all go check it out. Good time. Um, Dice Game Awards were this yesterday. This yesterday? Yes, this yesterday. This yesterday. This yesterday. Not just any yesterday. This, this one. particular yesterday. This exact yesterday in this week. But um, Dice Awards were last night. Um, game of the Year, same as the committee one from two months ago, was Overwatch. Overwatch really, really brought in the stuff. Uh, game direction was given to Inside, which I know both you guys enjoyed. Yay! Uh, game design was Overwatch, which I thought was a really, really weird call since that game design has already uh, been done before. It's a good game. Don't get me wrong. It's just that game design. I don't see how they got a game design award. It's it's a better version of TF2. Yeah. I mean, you it, have with, with added verticality, and it's good. I mean, I I'm not oh, trying yeah, to say it's not bad. Short. It's not bad. I mean, it's not that it's not bad. It is a good game. I understand. It's just yeah. like there's other game design elements that are new. So I wonder I if they just, judged it less on like the the game introductions know, versus the game like design balance, but more of the sense like yeah, how it's balanced. Like it's everything works properly. Everything is but but cohesive. we've seen that already. I mean, that's been a yeah. gameplay staple in every multiplayer game, and and hell if. If you're going to give game design awards to Overwatch for balancing, you need to give it to League of Legends and Dota as well. But there's a right. difference. Those didn't come out last year. 
Yeah, this game really came good. out this year and it's already on that position. But that's that's mm-hmm. going to be the same thing as saying, "Hey, we're you know going to take a great game design thing that everyone has used forever and give it to the game that used it this year." Well, but the thing is, they've already got it balanced. When Dota, oh shit, when Dota introduces a hero, it's already out of balance. I mean, they're still balancing shit. So I mean, they hit balance well, yeah, points but that, pretty that quick. Yeah, but that same thing that same thing happens to Overwatch too, and it's it's usually because of the emergent gameplay and the emergent meta of people saying new character, new abilities. How can I fuck everyone with this? And and going against the developers' expectations. From what I heard, the new ca- I can't remember the name of the new character, but she didn't rock the world when they came in. It was not someone that people used. Okay. But, Either way, um, that received the uh, game design, scanning through, finding some cool things. Handheld game of the year, Pokemon Sun and Moon. That was no surprise at all. Strategy game of the year was Civ VI. Uh, the only one there that really had any, uh, there's a Fire Emblem and an XCOM 2. Um, Steep gets game of the year for sports. This is a snow- That's surprising. snowboarding game by Ubisoft. And I mean, you're talking. I've- you're talking about all the other good. standards it went against. It went against the FIFA, Madden, yeah. 2K, basketball. That's is, the part that surprises me. Yeah. Is it an open world snowboarding game where you have yes. to free the half pipes? Well, um, the, secret, the, great half pipes. <laughs> the secret to making a game that. game anymore is it has to be open world. I mean, right? Yeah, which Every- it is. Yeah, everything. Everything should be open world, and you, you need to climb towers and liberate half pipes. The confusing <laughs> And you one. have malaria. And there the are conf- blood diamonds. The confusing <laughs> title to me, or award for me, was the RPG Massive Multiplayer Game of the Year. Given that you have World of Warcraft Legion that was nominated, you have The Division, which had a really big MMO aspect to it. The winner was Dark Souls 3. I disagree completely with this pick. I don't see how that's classified in the same realm as Massive Multiplayer. I'm not, yeah, I'm not talking bad about the game, because the game's great. Mm-hmm. Dark I, I Souls just... is sort of multiplayer. It's not, but it is. It's this weird nexus, and, oh, and that... you get the same thing in, in Neo and in the you know Souls esque games like it. But it's it's not an MMO. It's seriously not the division. Seriously not an MMO. It's got MMO ish features. Um, you, but it's the, 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 the dark division... zone. The, the dark the dark zone is um you have squads of random people you come across. The the in the one area it does hit MMO in the one area I just just because and you have got a, a zone of, of of crazy people in raids I mean they could have given this to a Destiny expansion pack they could have given this to Destiny is an MMO really yeah it is it is it absolutely is but I I would say it's more of an MMO than the Division and wow basically owns this category I feel like they gave it to Dark Souls because they said well. We can't give it to WoW again for the 10th year in a row. Let's pick right. someone else. Well, what gets me is like the Division verse, whatever. To me, this isn't an argument over what is the best game. This is distinctly for the category, and I don't see right. Dark Souls as a massive multiplayer game. It has it's multiplayer. Not. By all means, it has multiplayer. But it's not. Yeah. You don't buy <laughs> Dark Souls thinking, oh, yeah, I get to play with hundreds of people at once. <laughs> I, right. Out of out right. of every nominated game in that category, Dark Souls is the least massive of the multiplayer games. Yes, absolutely. Um, racing game of the year. There was two nominees. <laughs> if that doesn't tell you how far <laughs> large, the racing genre has came. Yeah, right. A large name racing franchise versus something I've never heard of. I wonder who won. Oh, um, yeah, Forza, of course. Yeah, it was Forza Horizon uh, <laughs> 3 versus Drive Club VR. Uh, Drive Club, I think it only really caught on because it looked good, and it was on VR. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Uh, you could buy a standard version, or I think it worked without VR and with VR, I think, but... I, I heard Drive Club really had issues out of the gate. Like, it was a rough launch. But I, I don't know the specifics because I don't really play racing games aside from Mario Kart. <laughs> the best everyone, racing game. Everyone plays that one. So, um, fighting game went to um, <gasps> Who Street got it? Fighter. Who got it? Street Fighter oh, 5. Street Fighter. What? Oh my god, a Street Fighter game won fighting game of the year. 
<laughs> Heavens so, to Betsy. There's a game on here that I have no clue what it is. Um, Pokemon Tournament. So this is clearly a Pokemon game, but is this like a Tekken hybrid with Pokemon? That's kind of what comes to mind, but I don't know. No, never mind. I lied, but yes. So I don't know what this Pokemon game is at release, but it did not beat Street Fighter. Hmm. Good God, don't go to the website. It blasts fucking Pokemon music in your ears. <laughs> yeah, that's why it doesn't Jesus. win. Uh, family Game of the Year went to Ratchet and Clank. Um, Rock Band Rivals is in there. I think that's the only one that really could have probably competed. Or Lego Star Wars. Legos are always fun. Do you guys play much Lego games? I've played zero Lego games. I have in the past. They're good romps. They're fun. They're generally wholesome. They're not the best games in the world, but if yeah. you're going to buy a licensed property, the Lego games are certainly not the worst thing you could buy. Actually, I did play like a demo for Lego Star Wars, I think. I played through all six of the Lego Star Wars with my old roommate. And it's to the point There's where six of those college. Yeah, it was the first or all six episodes to start with. Oh. We're talking third year in college. We're playing Lego Star Wars together and it's enjoyable. And it's the same kind of game that you can play with a little nephew or something. And they're funny. They're hilarious. They're so enjoy- at least at least before all the little Lego people never really had words. They just used physical humor and physical yep. um, communication. And all the time you would see the like little stupid Lego jokes, like someone being hit with a bat or something or, or getting hit with a lightsaber and the Lego pieces would fall apart. And it's just fucking hilarious. They're really good. They're good for older people and they're good, really good to play with younger kids. It's, I like them. So fuck you, Ratchet and Clank. She went to Lego Star Wars. Um, Damn right. <laughs> Immersive Reality Game of the Year. In other words, the VR title of the year went to Super Hot VR. Nice. This game is buried behind um, Oculus Store. I really want to get Revive oh, going really? so I can play it because Super Hot is amazing. Yeah. So release Super- it on the Vive, release it on Steam, and not behind some stupid fucking DRM that has yeah. nothing to do with your actual game. And I will give you money, but I'm not going to pay for your goddamn game and then fucking hack it to work with my headset. That's just not so, going to happen. I'm kind of surprised that Resident Evil 7, as much hype as it got for being a really cool VR experience, wasn't nominated for this. Or do you think it's because yeah. it's That's not a strictly year. VR game? This is strictly okay. for the 2016 calendar year. Oh, 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 oh. Gotcha. Fair enough. Okay, so the other ones we have is like Technical Achievement, Uncharted 4, mm-hmm. Story, Uncharted 4. Sound design went to Battlefield 1, but musical hmm. composition went to Doom. Damn nice. right it did. Yes. I think God every- damn right it did. Yes. Everyone in any way affiliated with 72 PC realized that 72 PC fully endorses the Doom soundtrack. Yes. Yes. Okay, I've got a, I've got a sidebar, you guys, real quick. Yeah. Who here actually listens to video game soundtracks? Just me as music. Okay, good. I want to make sure I'm not the only one because I listen yeah, oh, to like absolutely. fucking chiptune stuff. I, I threw on some Katamari while I was programming the other day. Like shit's good, but Doom is probably the one I'm I've been listening to the most often since I've played the game. It's goddamn great. And and it's on Google Play. I'm sure you can find it on Spotify and other things. Yeah. It is definitely on Google Play, and it is yes. actually something I listen to a good bit when I play Rocket League. Yes. Sweet. Um, so um, best character of the year went to Trico from Last Guardian. I can wholly speak to the, oh yeah. my god, that character is amazing. Yeah, I would say so. Art direction, inside, animation, yes. Uncharted 4, Spirit Award, no fucking clue what the Dice Spirit Award means, went to Inside. Sprite Award. Sprite Award went to Inside. Holy fuck, Eric. Please read better. <laughs> eh. Spirit Award. Woot! Um, Adventure Game of the Year, Uncharted 4. Action Game of the Year is all fucking shooters. So, um, I guess shooters are considered action games to them. Went to Overwatch. Other titles Hmm. in there. That was actually a really packed, really, really packed one. Battlefield 1, Doom, Gears of War 4, Titanfall 2, and Overwatch. Nice. Um, Mobile Game of the Year. Anyone? Anyone have any clue what the best phone game of the year was? 
I thought you already said this. Did you already say uh, wait, this before? No, 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 no. I foam think I know this one. Mobiles and oh. foam, not handheld. I thought you said this, though. No. Nope. I could have sworn. Okay. Nope. Wait, Candy Crush. No, damn, not this year. Hmm, I wonder what it could be. Minecraft. <laughs> what had more Solitaire. users at one given time than Facebook and Twitter? Lee Chess. Lee Chess oh, oh, The I great don't... chess site that's free, open source, <laughs> and available to anyone to play on their mobile device for free. Also, they've got a great website at LeeChess.org. Plug done. Anyway, Pokemon Go. <laughs> uh, Pokemon, Big surprise. No, no doubt there. Um, yeah. What shocked me, Super Mario Run didn't even make the list. Wow. Yeah. That's kind of a slap. That, that must have had a lot of hype and then just died and nobody cared after that. I heard it wasn't bad, but you Which, could play through it pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. It's a mobile game. You'll have that. Yeah. And then the final category was Best VR Technical Achievement went to Eagle Flight from Ubisoft. Hmm. Not too familiar with it. I don't know anything about it. Nope. I have heard about it. It seems interesting. You're literally flying like an eagle. Hmm. But I haven't played it. I was going to say, don't, don't go to the sea next. If you go to the sea, we're going to have issues. <laughs> okay, well, for all you sitting in there with us, uh, I think that's but pretty I, much a wrap, unless Tom has I, something for us. I, think. I do, I do. I have a whole gaming fact. One whole gaming fact. Ooh, all right. Can you guys guess the number, the, because of all the Zelda talk tonight, the uh -huh. max number of rupees you could collect in the original Legend of Zelda on the NES? Uh, 9,987. No. Way lower. Uh, I thought, 999? No. Er, I thought you would get this. I thought you would get 99? this. It's not 99. 49? Oh, think, think computers. Think computers. 256? Uh, 255. 55. Because it's, it's, uh, a, it's a signed that, integer. It's, it's a an fucking unsigned, sign. It's an unsigned 8-bit integer. To uh, hold more rubies would have required more memory, and why add more memory to an NES game? At that time, memory and computation is kind of expensive, so they used the smallest amount of binary memory they could to store your rubies, which was an 8-bit integer. Unsigned. Something for a later time is, on all the cartridges for Nintendo, they worked magic when they were programming to fit that stuff on cartridges. Oh, yes. Holy shit. But that's a topic for another time. For this time, we are out. So if you would like to give us some um, feedback, let us know what you hate, what you really, really hate, and stuff you find to be okay, you can uh, tweet at us at 72PC Podcast. You can send us some email at fanmail at 72pinconnector.com. You can see what we've been up to at 72pinconnector.com. And if you are watching us live, you can always see anything that we're doing at any time at our YouTube at 72 Pin Connector. And you could always watch us live 10, a, or 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Friday for this nice, fantastic podcast. So, until next week, game on. Game on, everyone. Bye. Bye. Tom, what do you think your best quality is? <laughs> Fucking tilting people. That's what I do. Fucking tilting people.